There was a lovely Hannah Kimura tribute, a tiny one from Kyrie Sane on last night's episode of Raw. And in that same match, we got to see what everyone's been talking about the last week when Nia Jax had a match against Kyrie Sane for this, like last night's episode of Raw. It was actually taped last Tuesday and there was a slight botch in it. All the reports say that it's not Nia's fault, but. That won't stop many people from saying it. So first off, let's talk about this lovely little tribute to Hannah Kimura. We've seen quite a few uh, sort of black armbands with Kimura's name worn by wrestlers across AEW and WWE and Impact as well, I believe. Uh, Sasha Banks wore a black armband on SmackDown on Friday. And as you could see there, when Kyrie Sane made her entrance on uh, in in, I guess kanji or katakana or hiragana i know my japanese alphabets thank you gcse japanese uh that 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 sort of language there says hannah chan thank you which is a really nice little detail it's better than nice. that of course Kyrie same tragically was the person who saw kimura's self-harming tweets on the evening of her death. And it was Kyrie Sane who, who, because, you know, the time difference, it was sort of afternoon for America and it was the middle of the night over in Japan. It was Kyrie Sane who rang stardom, a few people in stardom to go and check on uh, Hannah Kimura, but unfortunately it was too late. So yes, that's a, a nice little detail there. Yeah, yeah, nice little, nice little nod there because WWE aren't, they don't tend to do tributes for people who didn't work for them. They, they don't do those sorts of graphics uh, for people who didn't work for them in the past. So it's nice to see the wrestlers kind of do their own little tributes instead, which I, th I think is a, is a very, very nice touch. And also in the same match, another newsworthy piece of information, we got to see the bump edited from the world. Which was, uh, yeah, I, I first, before we get to that, I thought this was a really good match. The size difference between Kyrie Sane and Nia Jax really got over Sane as an underdog babyface. Yeah, I mean, Sane is an incredible babyface. It's kind of one of those things like, why did you turn her heel? Um, apart from the fact that she is, she no speak English, ergo has to be heel. Um, because she's such an incredible babyface. And watching her wrestle babyface again was just it, it kind of flooded back all of the, that love we had for her in NXT and even in her pre NXT work. We're like, oh my God, yeah, she's amazing. She's the pirate princess and I bloody love her. And I want to see it. I mean, she's never going to get a push in WWE, I don't think. I think this is the level that she is at on the main roster, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, do you know what? It, it wasn't, it, it was a pretty decent match for sort of the, the five minutes that it went for and then Jax used her power and, and threw her into the steps it basically looks like yeah it's just uh, Kyrie sort of catches her foot a little bit and falls into the steps uh, and cut her head open and then it's a very very heavily edited lots of cutting to the crowd as they sort of smooth over the cracks of this edit um for Jax to get the win because i think like in the actual like taping of it they just stopped it outright like the, the when the referee goes out to check on sane that's in real time that's where they sort of just cut it dead there uh, but I'm, I'm guessing they then retaped this last bit towards the end of the the uh the schedule after sane had been um covered up uh, you know and, and sort of repaired backstage if you will because they didn't show her face after that yeah, the report from Wrestling Observer and Fightful, so you know it's true when both of both of them are reporting it, is that that Kyrie Sane bangs her head on the steel steps and everyone comes out, matches stopped. She's bleeding quite profusely. She's also posted a uh, a picture. Oh, we've got that there as well. So that's the that's the aftermath after it's sort of been healed up a little bit. So quite a nasty gash there on her forehead. Well done, image gallery technician. It's Thanks, Luke. mate. He's got a butter. <laughs> uh, the but Kyrie <laughs> sausage rolls. Um, that's they. She said that she wanted to carry on with the match, so that they they went ahead with it. Uh, but you know the reports were some people said she was knocked silly. Uh, it's important to note because I've seen people sharing the clip of the spot. And yeah, it looks like Nia Jax throws Kyrie Sane's head into the steel steps. But that's the point. It's meant to look like that. 
Whereas people there have, and, and Dave Meltzer has reported this, have said, while Nia Jax is definitely at fault for many other things and many other injuries that happen, in this particular instance, Kyrie Sane was in full control of the bump and she just ran into the steel steps too hard to make it look good. Yeah, uh, it's it's you know it ain't ballet, folks, as they they often say, and uh, it's 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 unfortunate that it's Nia again, you know, and it only comes what a month after the buckle bomb incident to the same person, no less. Like so, it's it, it's you know Nia is is always going to be the ire of a lot of uh, male, and it usually is male wrestling fans, but you know wrestling fans in general, and yeah, I, I don't think this is one of those instances where you can like specifically pinpoint this was her fault other times absolutely like the buckle bomb incident 100 percent, you can say but this is in this instance it was not 100 percent the fault of nia Jax. Mm. so yeah but they just quickly edited after that to rush to the finish nia gets in the in the ring and pins Kyrie same for the win yeah, and you, and you know what? If you're building up Nia as the challenger to Asuka, her beating her tag team partner who really doesn't have a lot... I mean, the only momentum she's had is beating Ruby Riot, and let's be honest, everyone beats Ruby Riot at the moment. Um, so yeah, it, it sort of makes sense to to put Jax over Sane at this point. It sucks that Sane isn't getting that push, but I think Nia beating her in a very convincing manner is a good way to set up her match with Asuka at Backlash, aka this is the greatest match. This is the greatest match, Backlash. Unfortunately, I, we can't do that joke now because, like, they've they've effectively they've lent into it. I can't believe they're now playing the greatest show from the greatest showman. I know. I that they've they've jumped the shark. I mean, they jumped the shark years ago. What? Who are we to be surprised that this is all some kind of trolling effort on WWE's part, that Edge versus Orton might be the greatest match of all time? Uh, let's get on with some Super Chats to see what you guys think. Get them in. We'll be getting to them throughout the entire show, and then we'll go through the sort of play-by-play -play review of Raw. Uh, Sengri Sengur Vampire, love the show. Keep up the great work. Additionally, should people refuse to work with Naya if she is as dangerous as it seems? I would have thought if, that, if people would, you know... If she is as dangerous as it would seem, there would be people stepping up to say, no thanks, I'd rather not. I saw a really good post that the the same Nia, I think it was on Reddit somewhere, the same Nia Jax series of matches will be remembered in a similar vein to Ryback CM Punk. Because mm, yeah. just two people who, who don't work well together in, in yeah. that one of them keeps on getting injured. It's, yeah, it's... It's difficult because she's got such a track record of injuring people. She joined, she was one of the last people that they've currently got on the roster to join the company with a background in modeling, not not mm. a sort of a cheerleading or a, 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 a sort of athlete, but in as a model. You know, that, that seems like an, an old style version of it, but I guess people don't equate Nia Jax as one of those model recruits because she wasn't the stereotypical really thin skinny blonde big breasted one yeah and, and she was a plus size model but no that the fact of the matter is she didn't have any professional wrestling experience until she joined the company in 2014 15 i think and Something then she was called up to the main roster very quickly it wasn't like yeah. she was in performance in, in developmental for a while so yes it's it's difficult because i yeah it's, I guess it's up to the people who work there. The Wakandan forever says, love the show. Everyone stay safe. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Sam Wall, I would like the crowd to be wearing some mid-card shirts too. Everyone seemed to be wearing a Drew KO Iconics or Becky shirt. Oh, are we saying then that the Iconics are main event level? Because like that is a mid-card act, isn't it? So it's Kevin Owens. Yeah, I... I, 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 the crowd just doesn't do it for me. It's nice that the, the mm. audio elements of the crowd are nice. That definitely has improved the experience. But every time they cut to them, I'm like, you look like computer generates the AR response bots. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I enjoy the, the, they, they bring something to this, particularly with Drew's Claymore. Like that was when you really realize how much that he has missed having that crowd interaction with him. 
Um, but I mean, yeah, but they are like, you know, they're robots out there. They're, they're 2K20 graphics that are just sort of sat out there. And they are just as bad as 2K20 graphics. Just sort of, you know, they've got a couple of motions that you just sort of repeat. They look basically GIFs. It's the same few people. I don't know why I keep seeing Jessamine Duke so much. <laughs> is, 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 she, is she shown on camera more? No, I, I feel like it's her and Shotty Blackheart are the ones that always seem to stick out the most. Yeah, it's weird that. Uh, and Bianca Belair was definitely in the crowd, wasn't she? Was she? No, she can't have been. I, I mean, oh, if maybe she might I got have that wrong. I, I certainly didn't see her there, so I'm not saying that she wasn't, but I didn't spot her there. Okay. I would love to think that she wasn't, though, because, man, you want to talk about balls up NXT call-ups. Friggin' hell, that might, be the, that might be the greatest one ever because that's brought up, done nothing, and we're then in the crowd with the other NXT lot. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano at the same time as a tag team while they were feuding in <laughs> NXT and then for Ciampa to get injured right after. I think that takes the biscuit. It might do. Yeah, you're right. And finally in the Super Chats for now, but do keep getting them in. We will get to them all at the end of the show. Injection. I feel Edge versus Orton will be cinematic in my opinion. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been on record since before. I don't think it's going to be a match at all. I think we are not going to get anything. I think Orton's just going to punch him straight in the knob and cause the DQ. So they could be like, oh, that heel. He robbed us of the potentially the greatest match of all time. Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels said it was going to be the greatest ever. Uh, Hugh Jackman thought it was going to be the greatest show. And uh, yeah, he's robbed us of that, that dastardly viper. Yeah, because even if it is a cinematic match, it's not going to be the greatest cinematic match because... The stadium stampede. Uh, just before we get on with the full play-by-play -play review of the show, if you didn't see yesterday's support, Wrestle Talk support each other live stream and the stuff we've been pushing in the news over the last four or five days, we are sort of raising money for Calm at the moment, the campaign against Living Miserably, a UK-based charity to help people with mental health struggles. And we will be doing that mostly tomorrow night on Quizzlemania. Ten. 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 It's not the screen wasn't big enough for my fingers. If you Wrestle do, you could do five and I do five. <gasps> Quizzlemania ten right there, where it'll be Luke trying to reclaim his championship, the fist championship, from the evil tyrant that is Sean Ross Sap. What a uh, it'll me, who has come last in every time every time they've tried to compete. If I don't, if I come last again, live on air, oh, that chest hair is getting waxed off live. I ordered the V strips yesterday. They're In arriving today. Ooh. And someone with probably just as much body hair, David Starr. Actual wrestler David Starr will also be on the show as our special guest. Ow, my neck. Yes. So go over to Parts of Unknown. Set your reminder for Quizzlemania 10 there. Right. This episode of Raw began with Seth Rollins coming out for the promoted Rey Mysterio's retirement ceremony. And wouldn't you believe it? I know. I was confused by this as well. Yeah, because it felt like... Okay. okay. They they advertise this as Ray Ray Mysterio's retirement ceremony that's being hosted by Seth Rollins. This segment here felt like Rollins was coming out to say it's going to happen later in the show, and Ray and you know because they kept saying Ray's going to be on the show as well, and then it was just like oh no that was it. It didn't feel like even as a heel act this didn't feel like it was a retirement ceremony because he effectively says in here Ray's not going to retire. Yeah. So I don't. I, I this didn't feel like it was as advertised. Oh yeah, this is the first time WWE have pulled that <laughs> trick. It's look, it's not the end of the world. It's no. it's just like it's just a a segment that massively missed its potential. It wasn't bad to watch. Seth Rollins, I love his character work right now. I love how Murphy and Austin Theory walk around <laughs> like they are stuck with their hands together in that weird pose that they do to give the impression that they're disciples. And I thought some of the stuff was like Seth promo work was really effective saying that Rey Mysterio had to sacrifice himself, but how they framed the entire thing 
like you said, as Rey Mysterio's retirement ceremony, how they advertised it last week, was a total misleading shambles. Yeah. And it's it's just so far from the best version of what they could do here. And it's not a it's not that many steps along from making it better. I just don't know why they didn't do it. Like this is a heel thing, right? The idea is Seth is making Rey Mysterio retire, even though Rey doesn't want to. So the announcers should advertise that last week as, oh, and Seth Rollins says he's going to be hosting a Rey Mysterio retirement ceremony. So we all know from the get-go, oh, okay, something's afoot there. But they didn't. They announced it like WWE themselves as a company were putting on a retirement ceremony for Rey Mysterio and they had chosen Seth Rollins to host it. It just it makes the the company in a kayfabe world look utterly stupid. Yeah, and it was also weird as well because they kept saying at the start of the show, Rey Mysterio is going to be on the show tonight. Rey Mysterio is returning to Raw tonight. So perhaps this is on me, but I thought he was there in the building. So when Seth and his crew were beating down Alistair Black and Umberto Career, I'm like, where's Ray? Why isn't Ray coming out to save them? Surely this whole segment is designed for Ray to make his return and attack Seth Rollins. But then like, later on, he just ha he has a Skype call with them. And I'm like, oh, oh, that that was the Ray return. It if yeah, it didn't feel like it all connected into place. And as you say, it's not the end of the world. Like this is, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But it just felt like it it wasn't, yeah. You put it perfectly. It was not the best version that it could have been. And it should have been because this had the potential to be really, really good. Yeah. So Seth introduced like a career retrospective of Ray's best moments, but it very quickly became that the recap of the segment where Seth tried to pop his eyeball out. Did you hear my joke on the, <laughs> the review? I said, hey, Seth, we wanted highlights, not eye lights yeah and you you then had the temerity to then say that the viking raiders and street profits weren't funny hey at least mine have structure <laughs> um and this brought out alistair black alistair black started off right away with seth Rollins, really intense brawl and had a cracking match this I was thought. awesome yeah went through awesome. about three commercial breaks at the start i was concerned i thought oh is Rollins just going to work over Black, and then Black hits a Black Mass at the end to win because Rollins was taking all of it. Umberto Carrillo comes out with a chair to ward off Murphy and Theory from getting involved. And that was kind of the turning point then when Black started to make a comeback. And they had the second half of the match was awesome back and forth action. Mm, it was really, really good stuff. Yeah, back and forth. Uh, lots of near falls and stuff, avoiding each other's finishes. I thought this was really, really great. And in the end, Theory and Murphy tried to get involved. Carrillo, who would run down at the start of the match to kind of back up Alistair Black, stopped them. And Black got a shock roll-up win. But it was really, really good. And actually, the right finish as well. This didn't need a Black Mass win, particularly if you want to extend this feud out and have more outings with Black and Mer uh, with Black and Rollins. So having Black get a shock roll-up win here completely works. I don't know if they're trying to tell the reverse story of Seth always helping his disciples win, but his disciples actually ended up costing him the match. I guess we'll have to see how the, the stuff progresses. But regardless, the heel... Number advantage, got the better of Carrillo and Black after the match, and Seth, Murphy, and Theory beat them down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we got a plug for the new version of the WWE Network. We had a mm. super chat, and it just came in just before we ended our last segment from Michael Dominguez that said, are you going to talk about Raw Talk on these recaps? And I've not seen it, but what I can tell you is that on WWE's YouTube channel, there is a clip from it that is one minute long. And it's just, they have one clip from it, which suggests to me that there wasn't a lot on the show. I Yeah, I haven't watched it either, but I've read a sort of breakdown of what happened and some screenshots. And I just thought it was going to be talking smack. Hmm. No, it's like a continuation of Raw where the promos and interviews are done in the ring. I give it three months because we've had we've had Raw talk before. Like, this is not the first time they've tried this. Uh, I give it three months. It's baffling, like, that the best version of this ever was Talking Smack, which was genuinely WWE business-changing. 
the amount of people that got over with their promos there. Fantastic. We wouldn't have had the Usos and the New Day series of matches if it wasn't for, for Talking Smack, I believe. We might not even have... Well, we did Did we really want the Miz Bryan after all of that? I, I don't know. But in the moment, I did. Yeah. Uh, it was some excellent television. That's what works. And what they, they look at that and think, no, nah, it needs to be more raw. It needs to be like a three and a half hour long version of Raw now, where we just have 30 minutes, more promos and more Charlie Caruso doing the, the interviews. Yeah, it, it needs to be more scripted. I mean, it, uh, it, as you said there, like Talking Smack was literally the best thing that they've done in ages and years. And they took that off the air because it was too good. So I don't have a lot of hopes for, for, for Raw talk. No. Um, then we got a, a sort of montage of filler moments. We got an Apollo Cruise video package. So many video packages and stuff on this show. We got Angel Garza and Zelina Vega talking about beating Kevin Owens last week to Charlie Caruso. Garza gave Caruso a rose, but then Vega snapped it in two. He ne- there meal. was no... Uh, well, beating Kevin Owens is much like making love <laughs> to a beautiful woman this yeah. week, unfortunately. <laughs> Then Shawn Michaels chose Edge over Randy Orton Mm -hmm. in the match. And this is where we got the greatest showman music in the background for the. the (laughs) Uh, Then we got Lana slapping MVP backstage for not giving her Bobby back. And then, you know, this is only about 10 minutes since we saw that whole opening thing. We got a video recap package, like a long one, of the entire first 40 minutes of the show. And they they treated this like it happened two weeks ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you didn't see this from two weeks ago, but I was like, it was 10 minutes ago, mate. I am struggling to keep track of time and days past in <laughs> lockdown as it is. Pulling this trick on me within the same hour when I'm watching this in the morning from 6 to 7 a.m., <laughs> It screws my brain up. Something fierce. Uh, and Caleb Braxton brought out Apollo Crews, um, who is handpicking his opponents to face for the United States Championship, which I think is a really sort of nice way he's kind of picking people that he thinks that should get their chance at the belt. Now, you had an interesting view on this in your review that I've got the opposite view on. For me, Cruz was the one that was being more heelish in this segment. And I'll tell you for why. He picked Kevin Owens because he's injured and knew that he could win. It was, it's, it's fake baby facing. This is how I, I mean, this is my own interpretation of it, but like Kevin, Apollo Crews came out to be like, I'm the humble champion and I want to pick someone who deserves a chance. And he picked someone who was visibly limping when they were walking to the ring, who was beaten up quite badly last week as a way to, I know I'm going to win here, but at the same time, it also looks like I gave this guy a chance and I'm a really nice guy. That And, and there's a point, because Kevin Owens was dominating this match and it wasn't until that uh, he got kicked in the nards that a crew sort of like, it felt like he faked the injury a little bit and then viciously jumped on Owens for doing so. I thought this was actually sort of like little teasers of the eventual Cruz heel turn because what he did really wasn't a heelish thing to do in picking Kevin Owens, but you could make the arguments like, but you did pick him when he was injured and he also did nearly beat you. That is interesting. I hadn't thought of that in the slightest, but that's not to devalue it. One of the reports a few, well, a month ago before Cruz came back and won the title when he had that injury against him in the Andrade match was that the plan was for him to turn heel. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that very much could be the case. And maybe the Owen stuff was a red herring. And, and what, you're, what you're saying is actually the plan. I took it as Owen. So Owens comes down, he answers the challenge, and he doesn't play it off like he's injured. He plays it off like he doesn't want to be pitted by Apollo Crews. And he said, look, I don't want you to pick me and give me a title shot just because I lost to Gaza last week. And it was, it was a real kind of self-burial, unfortunately, of the KO character, because I certainly wasn't thinking that. He, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more thinking about the momentum he has coming off of WrestleMania and those two wins against Seth Rollins. Uh, but they, you know, Owens decided now is the time where he's having his latest crisis of confidence. And 
then when he wrestled the match, I thought they had a really, really intense yeah. fight here. I, lo- I loved it. This felt more like the the old fighting babyface Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen almost from Ring of Honor, where it was like the hockey fight, being really vicious. It would be like big move, and then he's right back up again, another big move. It wasn't like all oh, fake wrestling selling and stuff. And then, yeah, then comes the spot where he kicks him in the dick. So I just thought it, but he See, did but, back off and he was like, you, you know, exactly. you get to the... And it looked like it was an accident. He was going for the stunner. It's mm. just that he accidentally kicked him in the nuts. So, I I mean, I don't, I don't think that you're, I don't know to devalue your reading of it either. I think that's why it was so good is because there are various different ways to look at this segment. Mm. What I didn't like was because yeah you're right i think i like that multi-layered thing i'm I'm annoyed that kevin owens after being cemented in a mid-card feud last week is now in a mid-card feud saying he saying to himself that he's crap that's no good the stuff that came around it was good but the final bit with the finish angel garza and andrade run out they cause a double dq holla holla we got a tag team match players i had no time for it's just so lazy. WWE do it all the time. Just have Cruz be Owens. You're already telling the story that he's got a crisis of confidence. Have Gaza interfere, and then maybe Apollo capitalizes on that. And you're like, huh? Well, that was a bit heelish. And then you yeah. lean into it more into this multi-layered allegiances. But um, I yeah, actually, that because they didn't do that suggest to me that this isn't the plan at all. <laughs> they, they don't really have any plans like that. No, because Cruz pinning Andrade does less for him than him pinning Kevin Owens instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't really know how to feel about this. I feel like we are stuck on the... I, I, wrote, I wrote a line that I took out of my final review, which was the mid-card merry-go-round. Hmm. It just feels like it's just... Da, 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 nothing, nothing's going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we got Asuka telling Kayla Braxton that she's going to beat Flair later on. Then we got Street Profits and the Viking Raiders in their latest instalment of Anything You Can Do, We Can Do Better, doing bowling. Yes. So here's here's the, the sort of rundown of this. Raiders are good at bowling. The Street Profits are not. Hansen finds a turkey leg in the ball dispenser. They drink goat's milk and have an argument over whether they should say cheers or skull. Um, the Viking Raiders get hungry, so they go to find more food. They find more turkey legs and are then told to leave. The joke here is that women find Hansen cute, but not Ray Rowe. Then- Ivar. <laughs> Whichever one is which. And then the Street Profits turn off the light, and that makes them good at bowling and the Raiders bad, but then the Raiders win by one point. And 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 that's it. It's fun. It's also meaningless. <laughs> but that like that sounded quite disjointed, didn't it, listener? The way Luke just described this whole segment. Surely there was some more connected tissue, some more actual classical storytelling to all of this. Nuh-uh. It was like a fever dream of hallucinations. It's yeah. someone trying to pop Vince McMahon with various classic Vince McMahonisms. Oh, the larger guy finds food anywhere. Oh, women inexplicably find the larger guy more attractive. I. It's funny because the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits are hugely affable. I do enjoy these segments, but they're so they're just ridiculous, and it's been going on for weeks. Street Profits are the tag champs, right? Yes. Because when I was watching this segment, I didn't, I couldn't remember if they were or not because it doesn't feel like this is over the belts anymore. No. And I'm sure that's kind of the point I, in a way. But what I miss, what I miss from all this is right at the start of this feud, they had a very, very simple story, which is the Street Profits cannot beat the Viking Raiders. And Bianca Belair was trying to get them to act more seriously because when they act like goofy idiots, they can't beat the Viking Raiders. And somewhere in all of this, that's got lost and has just become, what wacky segment can we do this week? Also, we haven't thought what we're going to do once we arrive at the place to film said wacky segment. So we'll just make it up as we go along. And that's why they tend to feel very disjointed. 
Yeah, totally. I've seen uh, a lot of reaction to this being like, yeah, but if AEW did this kind of segment, everyone would love it. And I'm like, can you not see the difference? Can you not see the difference between a bubbly bunch sketch, which is tied to character and has a clear escalation of humor to this, which is like someone is farting jokes into a void and they're just kind of weirdly disconnected and playing through that. And there's no finish to this stuff. No. It's, uh, and, and what is this all for? What is this ultimately all for? Because I no longer want to see a match between these two teams. No. And it's, yeah, I mean, I, I, you can't tell their podcast listeners, but I rolled my eyes incredibly hard uh, yes. to the point where I nearly lost them. Mm. Uh, after that, we got Nikki Cross having a match against Billy Kay, continuing the women's tag team title feud there. Nikki Cross cut an excellent promo on last week's Raw. She's consistently the best thing in the act. Uh, she lost here to Billy Kay. I was genuinely shocked by this. Mm. I my 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 feeling at the start of this match was like, well, they've put Billy Kay in there because Nikki Cross can get the win, and like Kay is like the one I think they care the least about, and they like Peyton a lot more. So I was genuinely surprised when Billy Kay picked up the win, <laughs> clean as well, but you know by all standards. So yeah, good for Billy Kay, I guess. Poor old Nikki Cross though. Um, she is cons- like her commentary she did on smackdown during the alexa bliss sasha banks match was so good may even better by bailey being bailey and michael cole laughing the entire time because he was just like i honestly don't know what to say anymore and just, I, I i think she's great mm. uh ray mysterio then well i've lost track of what segment this is supposed to be is this the retirement ceremony was seth the retirement prelude i don't know <laughs> None of the announcers or Rey Mysterio himself seem to know either. Rey Mysterio sort of video calls him from his little white room. He had a lovely artwork, a lovely like Rey Mysterio in the air doing a sort of splash from Nitro uh, poster. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it said WCW Nitro at the bottom. I was like, I want that framed. <laughs> That's gorgeous. And he says stuff. He's got an eye patch on his eye and he's get, says, oh, I condemn Seth's actions. I, I I lost interest in this, I'm afraid. Yeah, and, Walter, and then Dominic sat down. I was going to say, Walter walked in at one point uh, to talk about how his dad's the best and he doesn't want his dad to retire. Um, and Ray kind of loses his way a little bit to say the same thing over. He's like, damn you, Seth Rollins, for what you did to my family. I, I liked it that he said, I tell you, let me tell you this, Tom and Joe. And I'm like, oh, poor Byron. Like, mm-hmm. tell Byron as well while you're there. Um, but yeah, uh, Dominic says that it's an eye for an eye. Um, and yeah, I guess he's going to come for his revenge. That was the one minute clip from Raw Talk that was on uh, WWE's YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I yeah, so it's, it's hinting that Dominic's going to come after Seth. I hope that Seth then recruits Dominic. I think that would be a really interesting way to take this. Uh, but I don't know. And that this sort of muddled episode installment in this feud has has yeah really uninvested me from what was going on because I was really into this beforehand and that's quite something I think maybe it's because Rey Mysterio retiring is such an overdone crutch in the last couple of years that it really holds no weight and it was an unnecessary thing to add to this segment you just needed to say he's injured <laughs> Yeah, totally. That um, eye he, injury was brutal enough as it was. And he doesn't know when he's going to come back. He said he's either going to be cleared in a couple of weeks or he'll never be cleared again. So we'll find out soon. Um, the the Gronk was then jumped by our truth. Uh, it's this was I. Who cares? It's I'm because just... the Gronk was twenty four seven champion. He has exercised a clause in his contract, so he's no longer with WWE because he was signed by WWE. Remember, he was the host of WrestleMania thirty six. Wasn't that worth it? He's already gone, and our truth is again the twenty four seven champion. I do the longest reigning twenty four seven champion, the Gronk, and it's not even like they got any segments out of it. This is the first segment that he's had since being champion at WrestleMania, which I think was four years ago. And yeah. and this was it. Truth just pinned him. And that, that's all the segments we've got from him. It was what all worthwhile. Yeah. What a spectacular botch that the Grox run in WWE turned out to be. And yet, 
and yet it was still better than Pac-Man Jones in TNA. Uh, then we got Nia Jax versus Kyrie Singh. We've already covered Randy Orton cut a you know a well-delivered promo backstage on Edge, but again, I don't really care about it because he's not saying anything new. This feud naturally climaxed at WrestleMania. I didn't want to see it anymore after that. And WWE is shoving down our throats this idea that it's the greatest match ever, which is actively off-putting and annoying. Naturally climax, name of your wrestling pay-per-view. Thank you very much. Natural climax, 32. <laughs> uh, what I did love, however, was Charlotte versus Asuka in a Raw Women's Champion versus NXT Champion match. The only thing I would have wanted was this be the main event of the show because I think, you know, Raw Women's Champion versus NXT Women's Champion, that's enough. That should be. That should be the main event. Uh, but other than that, yeah, and the finish was lame, but everything before that I thought was excellent. And that, and that is why I could not get into this match. As good as it was, and as good as Charlotte Flair is, Charlotte Flair is so good, and as great as Asuka is, and she is so great. I just could not get into this match because my first note here is this has DQ written all over it. There's absolutely no way WWE was going to pin Charlotte Flair a week before uh, a NXT TakeOver in your house match. And they're not going to pin Asuka two weeks before her match with Nia Jax. So this only was going to end in either a DQ. And in fact, <laughs> actually it ended in a worse finish because Asuka gets counted out. We didn't even get to see the ref count. I thought at first... The, the match ended in DQ because Nia Jax attacked Asuka. It was only when I rewound it to re to watch it again. The bell rings before Nia attacks her. She did mm. get counted out, but we don't see the ref do it. So it really looks like the referee like prematurely rang the bell because Nia was going to attack her. So it didn't come across particularly well, despite the fact that you know, the match was really good. But Nia Jax caused the distraction by playing Asuka's music and doing her dance. Yeah, coming out with the mask and a bit of the green makeup under her eyes. It was, it made Asuka look rubbish. But let's focus on the positives. I thought Charlotte and Asuka, whereas, whereas Seth and Tyler, Seth and Tyler, Seth and Alistair, saying Tyler Black, which is Seth's old name, weird, uh, got really good in the second half, I thought. This was really good from the start. And th they were just trading submissions and near falls back and forth. I really, really liked it. And it really made me want to see Asuka versus Charlotte on a very big stage. Yeah, I don't want to spook you either, but it just felt like someone just put their hand on my shoulder and it uh, freaked me out a little bit. What? Yeah, just uh, honestly, just I just felt a hand pressed down on my shoulder for a second then. Very was creepy. it actually? No, no. What, it was, was, it, just... was it your lady partner? No, I mean, you can see. Like, Why? Well, I was looking at myself. I look at myself when I do these things. <laughs> No, no, there was there's no one here. But I genuinely thought there was for a second. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Didn't someone die in your house before you? Uh, the previous owner did die in this house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, she's definitely still here. Mm, creepy. Uh, speaking of people who are still around, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> Segway, mate. This you described this as storylines of Christmas past or something, and it yeah. was like it's exactly that we said last week. The reason why. Lashley versus Drew McIntyre is so great is because there's no Lana turning it into comedy nonsense. And as soon as Lana came in, I was like, oh, no, mm. no, don't don't be around here. I was really enjoying this until you showed up. There's part of me which is like, well, thank you, WWE. Thank you for paying attention to stuff you do and not just dropping stuff. I do appreciate when you try and tie up loose ends. But there's another part of me that says of all the things that you <laughs> could drop. <laughs> Which you do all the time. Why couldn't this have been one of them? You know, they just dropped the Eric Rowan spider storyline. And we were like, do you know what? It was for the best. Like, it was really pants. And we were like, that was great. If they had just not really referenced the fact that Lana and Lashley are married, and then they just brought Lana back once this feud is over, I'd have been like, do you know what? Fine. I really don't mind there. But yeah, they decided to have her kind of sort of half get involved. Because she didn't really cause the finish. So, like, Lashley helped MVP get the heat a little bit on Drew McIntyre, but then Drew just made his own comeback and won. Mm. So, it's not like Lana caused a distraction. So, why yeah. did she come out? Yeah, it's, uh, but by the way, are you, because you said you want it to end the same as Eric Rowan's Spider, <laughs> where Drew McIntyre beat up the Spider, do you, are you saying you want Drew McIntyre to beat up Lana? 
yeah, just throw some stairs down onto her. Yeah, yeah, in, in uh, a cage, no less. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, so so the the crux of this, how it played through the night. Lana wants to know what MVP's problem is. He's stealing her husband, and then she realizes because she was not allowed to come out for Bobby's la- Bobby's Lashley's Bobby's matches anymore, and she says, "Ah." but I wasn't told to not come out for MVP's matches. So yeah, she comes out, but she doesn't really play into anything. As you were saying that, I, I think the reason she might be kept around is to in some way give Bobby an out when he loses to McIntyre at the Backlash match, which I, j- I want that to be a clean finish. Same here. Same here. It's a shame, but wow. Wow. What a unit MVP and Bobby Lashley have become. I was just, when they came out, so Bobby Lashley comes out first in trousers and then the depriving us of the butt. Remember the butt that Leo Rush used to point at week after week? Oh, it's God's butt. <laughs> Move aside, Captain America's butt. <laughs> and yeah, he came out first and then MVP came out. And I thought, man, they look badass. How was it only a month ago? that Lana and Bobby were flipping tires. Yeah, which that's nothing, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really, really like these two together. And I hope that once this is over, this feud is over, which I kind of predict will be done by Backlash, that we get more of MVP and, and Bobby. <coughs> totally agree. Yeah, really, really yeah. like them. I like them as a pair. And I love them going up against Drew. I think I... I'm running out of ways to describe how good Drew is Mm -hmm. (laughs) because he, I didn't realize I missed it so much, but I said it in a previous review where Drew only kicks out at two. If it's a signature move, you know, he really, he really saves the close near falls for stuff that matters. And it really ups the pace of the matches and it makes him feel like he's more in control because he is enormous and he's also the champion and he carried himself perfectly here he gave mvp enough so mvp could work him over a bit but he never looked in trouble and that is just it's just a like watching a master at work yeah really really great stuff love him true love him as champion and he wins with a claymore love the claymore what a move and he pins pins mvp but then the master lock comes in from bobby lashley and the show goes off there uh, yeah, to, to give the so. yeah to give the impression that it was live i think it was also to send people over to raw talk on their new free network uh, I wonder no, they won't release uh, viewing figures for that. But yeah, overall, I did enjoy the wrestling on the show. There was nothing actively bad. It was just a bit boring because it, there was so much padding. Yeah, it was a perfectly fine show is is what it was. I loved the Rollins Black match. Really enjoyed the Charlotte Asker match, despite the fact that I couldn't really get into it. Um, but there's also quite a lot of filler on the show. I actually really enjoyed the Kevin Owens Apollo Cruiser, but I really liked that. It might have been my favorite stuff on the whole show. Mm. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of filler surrounding it. <clears throat> uh, let's get on with our $25 a month or more pledge hammers on Patreon shout outs, all your cheap pops before we get on with your su- 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 super chats. Of course, go over to Wrestle Talk's Patreon page for what, Luke? Well, you can, uh, you, you can, what, uh, you, what a segue. Uh, you can now suggest pay per views for this month's Wrestle Talk Extra. And yes, people demanded it. People have been complaining that there's been too many WWE pay per views suggested in Wrestle Talk Extra. Out, out of all of them we've done, and I think we've done like 30 now, or maybe nearing 40 of them. Wow. Um, there's a lot of them. And I would say that there's probably been five that have been sort of non-WWE. I mean, I'm including NXT in that WWE bracket. So there were there have been some vocal people who have been complaining that they want some non-WWE suggestions. So we made the call. Let's do, for this one month, you can only suggest non-WWE pay-per-views. So now there are complaints that it's only non-WWE pay-per-views being suggested. 
Democracy is broken, people. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but either way, you go there and make your suggestions. Have your voice be heard at the $25 level because June, do you know what happens in June? Dominion happens in June. So yeah. that is what I would like to see on the ballots, please. Oh, nice. Uh, but you also get your name, your wrestling name, shouted out on this very show. Thank you, Thug Life, Andreas Fugli, Fuglistella. Fuglistella. Ooh. Andreas Fuglistella. Nice. Well, very nice. Benjamin, always the bridesmaid, never the McBride. Nicely nice. done. Living in the past, Kieran Pryor. Yeah, very good. Uh, one of my favorites, the craftsman, Blake Carpenter. First I've heard of that one. The Rocket, Dan Van Sky. Yep, you skipped over one. The $100 Man, C.D. Horver. We hope you're doing okay, buddy. The Kessel Run, DX Solo. Yes. Happy birthday for last week again. What an absolute hero that man is. The Wonder Wall, Brian Gallagher. Thank you, Brian Gallagher. Wrestle Talk's personal ring announcer, Adelie Gorbanitas. Thank you very, very much. No one names their kids this anymore. Larry! Larry. Luke's favorite fan, the one, the only, the awesome Bubba. Bubba. And lastly for this round, don't have a Shane Cowley, man. Oh, thank you very much, oh, everyone. Man. And of course, thanks to our moderators who are full of modiclorians, Tomo, Bumhead, Rob, Mod Mother Jenner, I'm sure is in there, Garage Art with a V, Les, all of the gang. Uh, right, let's get on with your su 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 super chat. Valab Mamadipudi, didn't anyone find it weird that Naya, who's supposed to be a monster, was always booked like one, is working more of a cowardly mind game playing heel? Uh, I don't know if she's been playing a cowardly uh, heel. I don't think she's been particularly booked well uh, since WrestleMania, though. Hmm. Dave Humphreys, do you think the issue people have with Nia is because her fast track push is because of WWE's PR spin on creating women's wrestling a couple of years ago, pushing diversity, but mainly her family connections? I think people certainly have a problem because of her family connections. Uh, I don't think people, maybe people have a problem with diversity, but I think most people's main criticisms of Nia is that because she's cousins with The Rock and that's why she, that's why she gets a push. Yeah. Uh, KML, Theory and Murphy remind me of Bebop and Rocksteady for some reason. Any chance we could get a support wrestle talk, support each other on a t shirt? Always good to have t shirt plans. Uh, I'm not sure if they remind me of Bebop and Rocksteady. They're too smart to be beat. Like, you need to be proper, proper rubbish, proper stupid, proper thick to be Bebop and Rocksteady. The Theory and Murphy, they're too smart for that. This is a very interesting one from Ever the Villain. Do we feel that Samoa Joe oh, has been fully tazzed? That is, in yes. I mean, he got way more of a main event push than Taz ever did, and but yeah, like his his WWE career got tazzed. Wow, wow. I have met that has summed it up. Uh, I hope Samoa Joe comes back and can wrestle again because that's where he's best used. I, you know, everyone keeps saying, man, Joe's good on commentary. Man, smell Joe's. I'm so glad he's on the announcer's table. I think he's been flattened out already. He's nowhere near as good as he was last December, I think, when he was on commentary then. No, no, I agree. Your Majesty Mapu Sua, uh, with a very generous donation. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done uh, since this period of isolation. And that damn virus. What would be the best retirement match for Rey Mysterio? I was thinking Andrade. Ray takes off his mask and Andrade takes the mask and carries on the legacy from Australia. I'd like to see it be Dominic. You know, really pass on that torch. I think Ray would like that, definitely. Um, it'd be weird seeing Dominic <laughs> wear Ray's mask. I don't want to see Andrade in a mask. He's too damn handsome. Yeah. Denver Fernandez. The crowd is so distracting. Their monotone response is so boring. No crowd equals best crowd. First Cuba chat. I think they believe means super chat. Thank you for all you do. Hashtag jam that jam. Jam that jam. Um, I I think I prefer the AEW style of crowd where they are wrestlers with personalities. Of course, as you opposed would, to Mark. 
Yeah, as opposed to generic people in the crowd. Uh, Josh Kirsch, what's next for Bobby Lashley after the Drew feud? Uh, Cruz, perhaps. That would be interesting. I think more Lana stuff, unfortunately. Mm. Josh Kirsch again, what's next for Kevin Owens? I'm loving Apollo. I mean, I don't know what you do with Owens at this point, but I, I mean, I said my piece on this last week. If you gave a man two big wins at WrestleMania, including the big WrestleMania bump, and you had no plans for him the following Monday, <coughs> then, I mean, that that's all on you. That That's bad planning. Josh Kirsch, what will Dijakovic's first feud on Raw be? Baron of course, Corbin. our exclusive. Uh, Baron Corbin isn't on Raw most don't weeks. <laughs> Whoever, um, like whoever the usual NXT like measuring stick is, um, but yeah, like it's it'll be he'll come out and have a few squash matches and have no storylines. Oliver Davis, he's going to beat Ricochet. Pavi, <sighs> Pavi, Sean Ross Sapp's number one fan. He's changed his name to. You I are can't so believe fickle. I cannot believe that Sean has created burner accounts to <laughs> super chat into this. You don't need hey, to, Sean. If he's paying, I don't mind. Make, I need to claw back some of that Fightful Select subscription. <laughs> Luke, you say the champ versus champ had DQ written all over it, but remember, they took the title off of Asuka to give it to Charlotte right before Mania. Yeah, but Charlotte wasn't a champion. Yeah. That wasn't yeah, a champion champ match. Title. Yeah. Uh, Jobber JJ, 496, Lana is the new Deborah. She'll be Drew's no. manager. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> only if it's for like a week and then they never reference it again <laughs> some excellent wrestling uh analogies here folks that's a Great good deal. gabriel reyes i knew asuka versus charlotte wouldn't end clean still waiting for asuka to eventually beat charlotte one-on-one -on -one. also no hate but naya should go back to developmental she could, do you know what? Actually, Nia going back to NXT at this point would probably be really good. Like it, it, NXT at the moment doesn't feel like a demotion. You know, like when NXT was first, like in the new version of NXT, not the the reality show version. When like Jinder went there and Tyson Kidd went there and Cesaro went there, it almost felt like, oh man, it kind of sucks for those guys who've been demoted. They've been sent back to developmental. NXT doesn't feel like developmental anymore. So it doesn't, it wouldn't, I mean, it doesn't feel like a step back for Charlotte. So Nia going there and just doing some, like, I think that'd be really good for her. I think they more mean literally going back to the performance center to learn how to work as opposed to going to NXT. Well, you, but if you go to NXT, then you've got full access. To, I mean, you've got full access mm. to the performance center as it is. But yeah, I don't think that's, it's not the worst idea in the world. You could, yeah, I think you can learn a lot doing that. Um, we've got a couple here as well. Uh, <coughs> DX Solo donated in to say man luke i finally got pac-man jones's theme out of my head last month now <laughs> it's going strong once again no <laughs> and uh, the mayor of painsville dan said non ww pay-per-views time to insert the wxw superstars of wrestling 2019 brian cage ken shamrock bob holly walter dragonoff and joey janella and others hashtag support each other oh my god that's uh that's a stiff show right there <laughs> Uh, on to WWE related MJVDG said, will Riker get punished or pushed? Flip a coin. Uh, it's an interesting one. I don't think uh, a company should uh, like do something about an individual's political beliefs to an extent. Uh, but the I think that he, he's definitely pissed off the locker room, which won't do him any good. No. Uh, Tushar said, is Bray Wyatt injured? He is standing with leg stick. Uh, oh, I haven't seen that. Uh, hmm. Any pictures or anything? Hopefully not. Uh, Pavi again says, do you think that there'll be a triple threat for the women's tag team championships? Bailey and Sasha versus Iconics versus Nikki and Alexa. They could set that up, but I think... Is, is anyone being set up for Bailey as a challenger apart from Sasha on SmackDown? No, they're effectively mm. feuding with uh, with Bliss and Cross. So yeah, it mm. makes sense to do it as a triple threat at Backlash. Um, Justin Edelheat, um, have you guys heard of the Performance Center Stalker? Yes, if it's the person I'm thinking about, uh, yeah, they're a very disturbed individual would show up a lot at the Performance Center. And I believe he, he took a big dump outside, uh, turning up with a gun as well at one point, I think. Oh, wow. So, yeah, but I think he's he was committed last I heard. Uh, and um, House of Fury is something we talked about a lot on this. It's the, uh, the MVP and Bobby Lashley is the uh, duo from 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Great work they did there as well. 
Indeed. Um, Wrestle Talk related. Louise Marie said, about to head to bed, so I'm getting my chat in now. Have a lovely stream, you lovely lads. Much love from Swaft Under. Sleep dream, sweet dreams, Louise. <laughs> uh tisha again said hello wrestle talk uh first sc your big fan our first super chat your big fan from india thank, thank you, you tisha much. uh calculon said amidst the chaos in america you are the distraction for this black man support wrestle talk love from philadelphia love from london right back at you absolutely right back stay at you. safe uh magnus this is off topic but luke glad you liked dave hi i'm dave we- did you tweet about this? I, I, I tweeted about it last right. night because I, I just finished watching it last night. And I was like, <laughs> dude, it's so good. And I couldn't stop talking about it, basically. Uh, hi, I'm Dave. James Caruso. Uh, or, yeah, Caruso alert. Very proud of Rest Talk and how the channel has grown. Content that content. We couldn't do it without you guys. Dylan from Cork. Not able to watch the stream live, but I just got a job, uh, job promotion. So here's some money. Catch you all for Quizzlemania tomorrow. Well mate. done, Dylan from Cork. God, you don't hear that so much these days. No, a job a promotion. Job. <laughs> it's usually, I, I, I've still got my job today. That's the yes, good news. That's the good news. Well done, buddy. Absolutely well done. What a lovely lad. Couldn't have happened to a nicer person. Um, Patrol, uh, uh, Patel, uh, Patel Ron 6. Come on, Luke, put your teeth in. Um, please show the photosynthesis tattoo, Oliver Davis. There it is, folks. We talked about it on Friday's magazine show my hand writing because i did it myself i told the story adam didn't really believe me mm-hmm. um and patel ron six again said have you contacted uh, chris van vliet to schedule an interview watch this space and patel ron also asks who tweets from the wrestle talk twitter account we all do um michael dominguez um dreamt uh, ran into seth asked to say support wrestle talk and he ranted 20 minutes at dirt sheets quizzlemania losers should get 10 walter chops no need to wax i told this story before but we were gonna do walter chops at MediaCon last year but we could not get health and safety to sign off on it because it was quote too dangerous no way i'm taking a walter chop christ <laughs> Uh, Stu Pidiot, um says, uh, oh, what a segue, Ollie. AEW rule wrestling, by the way. Yeah, tribalism. Little rainbow emoji as well. Uh, Kratos' Forgotten Sons said, uh, thank you for supporting mental health awareness in yesterday's stream, along with many other people out there. I too suffer, and I'm currently in the trenches again. It meant the world to me. Hashtag one love. Hashtag Russell Talk foot foot for life. Oh, sorry to hear that, Kratos. And uh, anything we can do to help you out, remember, get in touch. And also, if you want more professional advice and someone to talk to, which I wholeheartedly recommend, I think it'll be enormously useful, go to support Wrestle Talk, support each other uh, on our website, and you'll see loads of contact links that you can get in touch with someone. Um, lastly, uh, a couple more for Pavi. Tinfoil hat theory time. Wrestle Talk is owned by AEW. That's why Dango looks like Tony Khan. But if Wrestle Talk buries him, then Vince is mocking Tony Khan. Uh huh. I'm not sure who Dango Who's is. Who's Dango? Um, oh, sorry. Actually, we've got well, quite a few more, actually. Do apologize. They've, they've just come up. Um, General Super Chat, <laughs> um, Garage Art with a V. I'm going to assume that's Les. Says hashtag. Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. Do you want to take us through these last minute they super chats? very much do. Sure, we'll do. Gabriel Reyes, I think Joe should not like Seth, even though he is the heel commentator, as he was feuding with Seth before injury. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yeah. He was like teaming with Kevin Owens, weren't he? Ultra unit. Mm, yeah. Uh, King Rasta, aka Kyrie Sane's current boyfriend. Hey, guys. Hope all is well. Support Wrestle Talk. Lovely time with the boys and hey, girls. Yeah. Uh, Dematic the Ghost. Whatever happened to MVP's tag team? Oh, my God. Do you know what? I was just thinking about this this morning as well, thinking, like, what did happen to Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink? Do you remember what WWE were really high on Brendan Vink? Mm. Brend- I couldn't even got his name right. Brendan Vink. And what happened to Cedric and Ricochet? Three week Hashtag three-week push. Uh, Pavi, Sean Ross Sapp's number one fan again. All I'm saying is Charlotte, NXT and SmackDown champion sounds like a move WWE would definitely do. Just afraid they'll take that title from Asuka again. But it wasn't for the title. So, mm. it just, I mean, even if it was for the title, I still would have said it had DQ written all over it. Uh, Justin Edelheat. There have been rumours of Adam Cole going to AEW. I don't think it's a good move because he'll be overshadowed by the elite. Your thoughts? 
that would suggest that everyone on the roster on AEW is overshadowed by the elite, which I don't think is the case. I think that there's don't confuse rumor with speculation as well. There's rumor implies that someone's heard something somewhere. I think most of this stuff comes from the fact that he was at the AEW party the other week. That's because his girlfriend is Britt Baker and he was there with her and he's friends with the Young Bucks. So that's speculation. Um, but I, I, I think it could be a good move. King Rasta, a.k.a. Kyrie Sane's current boyfriend again. I had a fantasy booking theory for Ray's retirement. If you are interested in listening, we can't read everyone's fantasy booking, I'm afraid. But, you know, share, tweet it out like, and, and then see if it gains some traction. Tusha Vasista, I feel sad for the new WWE crowd standing for three hours. And the rest. It's a lot longer than three hours. They do batch tapings during those recording schedules. Uh, yeah, it t- turns out it was over 12 hours that they were standing. Oh, that Oof. sounds like some form of torture. Uh, anyway, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Please click the videos that have just appeared on the screen right now. Go back and watch my Wrestle Talk news review from earlier. And of course, go and subscribe to this channel because we will have NXT in your house predictions with Laurie, Pete, and Adam up later today. But for now, I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen, and that was wrestling. Bye. 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 Bye.